So in this Cartoons Aren't Anime series, we've touched upon most of the primary ways in which anime differentiates itself from cartoons and vice versa. However, even though we've talked about why cartoons aren't anime, we haven't talked about why people who like anime don't like it when you call cartoons anime. And this is especially true for people who prefer anime to cartoons in all aspects. They can hate it. And I'm not exactly one of these people. However, I made this series because yes, I don't necessarily like it. And I will preface this by saying it's usually in the media where I hear this, but I digress. I feel this not because cartoons aren't good to watch, but because they're completely different on some fundamental levels, which we've reviewed in the series. It's like calling a moped a motocross bike. Sure, I like them both and their types of motorcycles, but what's wrong with you? They're completely different. So let's unpack why saying this is an anime feels like such a fraught statement. Firstly, the quality of the animation is very different. Now, no, I don't mean that cartoons aren't of high quality or production value. What I'm saying is that anime, regardless of how much money is put into it, makes much better use of the visual medium than cartoons do overall. There are some anime with very crappy budgets that can't animate really dynamic action scenes. However, what they do use visually is utilized in a much more effective way. In cartoons, you tend to get a lot of wide angle shots with static images of characters that is very boring to look at. In anime, they make use of close-ups way more often. They focus on the scenery way more often as well. They pan through shots instead of keeping the camera still to make things more interesting. Anime just no filmmaking on a deeper level. If every cartoon was shot like a Pixar movie, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But we get a lot of this. A bunch of characters cluttered into a shot for no reason, even when they're not speaking. Also, concerning the quality of the animation, there's a misconception that all anime looks the same. These are all anime. All anime doesn't look remotely like this. Most anime come from the mind of a specific artist. That artist will have their own style. Similar to how most cartoons have unique art styles that are easily discernible. But every time someone wants to compare a cartoon to an anime, they say, look at the art style, it's an anime. How? Most anime look different. And most of the cartoons that people like to suggest are anime have nearly identical art styles. Every shonen, for instance, looks completely different. Not to mention they have very different animation styles as well. One Piece action doesn't look like Naruto action, doesn't look like My Hero Academia action, doesn't look like Demon Slayer action. The one thing I can say about the Avatar universe, even though its quality turned down in Korra, is that I always could tell I was watching an avatar scene because the art and animation is so unique. The next thing is the complexity of the ideas depicted on screen. And I suppose this is related to how seriously they take the audience. Every moral lesson in anime is not dulled down by the veneer of comedy, which most cartoons are by either that or a very weird pseudo morality around being adorkable as if being awkward and non-threatening has something to do with morality. This idea of morality is related to another reason why people hate when cartoons are called anime. Some people don't enjoy Western morality, tropes, or storytelling. We've reviewed this somewhat in the Pathos videos in the Cartoons Aren't Anime series, but essentially Western narratives tend to be about characters being accepted or helping the little guy like a superhero, social justice issues, believing in yourself, while Eastern animation tends to be about understanding your path, taking personal responsibility, trusting and friendship, growing and getting better as a person, not necessarily or always strength-wise either, and generally more internal struggles while Western animation tends to externalize conflicts or arcs. Not that cartoons or anime don't dabble in the other ideas, this is just in general. You may be saying to yourself, this is kind of subjective. How can you tell? Well, I'm not suggesting that everyone's, let's say, anime radar is as acute as mine, but let me give you an example. 
I was watching the Pokemon official YouTube channel. They make fun animations on it. I like to watch. Some are available on the Japanese Pokemon YouTube channel and different ones are on the English Pokemon YouTube channel because of localization. But they're usually always Pokemon products from Japan. One day I decided to watch this new animated short on the English Pokemon channel about Bidoof. It looked like they put a lot of work into the animation, so I said, let's try it. I watched it, an animation with completely no words at all, aside from Pokemon using their names, and I thought, hmm, this isn't an anime. Why did I think this? Pokemon is a Japanese company, so surely everything on their YouTube channel would be an anime, whether it's in English or not. Well, the story was completely Western. Bidoof was an outcast because he was weird and adorable. He admired the cool Pokemon and trainer, so he went with them. He still couldn't use cool moves and was still a Bidoof that loses at Pokemon battles. But in the end, he fights a powerful Pokemon and wins using the basic moves he already knew, telling the viewer, you were good enough all along. That is a Western story if I've ever heard one. The adorable outcast, the never being good enough, the I was good all along, the whoa, awkward scenes they put in the animation over and over again. And guess what? I was right. It wasn't an anime. It was written by Western writers and produced by a Western producer. And when I looked to see if the same short was on the Japanese Pokemon YouTube channel, it wasn't. And it wasn't because it was made for Western audiences by Western writers. Japanese people don't write those kind of narratives in general, and they don't teach those lessons in general. And even though there was no reason not to air it on the Japanese Pokemon YouTube channel at the same time because it had no words, they didn't release it for several weeks after it aired on the English channel. Now, the messaging in this short was very Western. You are good enough the way you are. That won't vibe with people who like anime or Eastern morality necessarily because that's not even generally true. And Japan doesn't usually teach that lesson. No one is good enough the way they are. Everyone could probably be kinder or smarter or more fit or harder working in life. Instead of showing an arc about Bidoof working hard, learning something new, or even doing the same old tricks even better than before, Bidoof's arc was about believing in himself. Not very anime at all. But this leads to the question of how you know you're watching anime or not. Obviously, there are a lot of deep fakes like these out and about, especially as Western productions start collaborating more and more with Eastern properties and Japanese studios. It isn't quite clear, but what is clear is that Japanese writers and studios are standing firm in many ways about what makes their medium and culture authentic and have pushed back at some forms of Western localization and blatant censorship, which is good for anime lovers. If you want to be able to tell the difference between anime and cartoons that look like anime, well, here's the easiest way to figure that out. Look at the original voice acting language. If it's in Japanese, it's an anime. If it's in English, it's not. Look at the producers and writers. If you see a bunch of Western names, it's not an anime. It doesn't matter how it looks or where it was animated. The West outsources an abundance of its labor anyway. Why should it surprise you that Western animation is outsourced to make cartoons? One example of this is the Star Wars Vision series. A Western property made in Japan. Yes, the executive producers were Western, but the local producer was Japanese. So was the writing staff and animators. It is safe to say that this is an anime. Ruby Ice Queendom, another good example. Western property, but a series being written and produced by the Japanese. This also will be an anime, while its origins were not. That Bidoof production was not an anime, and you can probably call it a cartoon. If you check for the original dub language, the writers and producers, it is very easy to see whether what you're getting is an anime or not, if you're not sure. Everything else, I like to call AI. AI isn't just artificial intelligence. AI, in terms of Western animation, is anime-inspired, or maybe American interpretation, or American ideal. Any choice is fine, really. Call it a marame for all I care. It's just not anime.
Nonetheless, these shows look or even feel like anime at times, but are clearly Western animations. So let's go down a list. This is AI. 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 Or you can just call them cartoons, which they are. Western animations are cartoons. There's nothing wrong with that term. People just don't like it often because it's associated with kids or seen as immature. But anime is anime in Japan, whether it's for toddlers or adults. So this pretty much sums up why some people hate for cartoons to be called anime and vice versa for that matter. But honestly, call it what you want. It's mostly inconsequential, but it's important to note that they aren't remotely the same. And beyond that, based upon where the show originated, calling similar products the same is just not an accurate statement. 